Now, there are two ways, two distinct ways, at least, that you can do this question. I'm just going to show you one of them, the most likely that at this point in the course you would use for this, which is to look at this inequality and to say, there's a fraction. Gross. I don't like dealing with fractions here, especially when the fraction involves your variables on the denominator. That's a bit of a disaster. So how do I get rid of this fraction? A normal instinct would be, if this were an equation, certainly, to just multiply both sides by x times x minus 2. In fact, if this were an equation, that is exactly what I would encourage you to do. It's certainly the simplest way to go about this. However, it's not an, in an equation, it's an inequality. Why does that change things? Why does that mean, now I don't suggest that you do this, in fact, I say, you can't. Anyone? Yeah. So this thing in the denominator, right, which I'm about to multiply by to get rid of the fraction, because it's a variable, because it's a variable, you don't know whether it's positive or negative, and so when you multiply both sides by that, what do you do with the direction of the inequality? You don't know, you don't know right? You'd have to actually create cases. Do you see why that's not an issue here? Why is that not an issue here? Because already because it's an equality, right? There is no direction to this equal side. Both sides are identical. Which is why if you multiply both sides by the same thing, everything stays fine. Not so over here. There is a way to overcome this though. Instead of multiplying by x, x minus 2, I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared, x minus 2 squared. Okay? Now, I've done it to the left. I better do it to the right before I explain what I'm doing x squared x minus 2 squared. Okay. The reason why this is more useful is because having squared it, I've now got rid of my problem. What was my problem before? Again? The the, well, the denominator was the problem which I'm about to solve, right? That's what this does. But squaring it rather than multiplying by just the denominator means I know the sign, right? I now know this thing is either 0 or positive, which doesn't change the direction of the inequality. Do you agree with that? So therefore, I know I can leave the direction of the inequality where it was, but now I can start to cancel things out and get rid of that fraction, which was a problem before, right? So let's have a look. Uh, the whole point of doing this is that you've got these two guys going that cancel out like that. So what am I left with? I've got 6x, x minus 2 on the left-hand side. Is that okay? And then you've got this on the right-hand side. Okay. So there was the first step that was a bit of a tricky obstacle to get over. Now what do I do? In this case, well in most cases, my instinct at this point is to expand. Right? I usually expand when I see something like this because then I can collect like terms, I can factorize, blah 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 blah. That is a terrible idea in this case. Do not expand. What is it about this particular arrangement that tells you you shouldn't expand? Yeah. Okay, so, so the first problem that sort of is blaring at me is this thing in here is a quadratic, right? This is an x squared term. Well, when you multiply through, you're going to add x to this power, x is to the power of 4, and you're like, I don't, I don't want to go there if I can avoid it. That's not a deal breaker, but it's certainly something which I'd like to stay away from, if possible. Okay. The other thing is, have a look at something like this. I'm just going to tweak the question ever so slightly. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that's right. Okay, have a look at this. In this case, you don't have as many choices. In this case, expanding is something you almost have to do. Almost. What's different? What have I changed? Yeah. Uh, okay, so you've 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 answered the question underneath my question. Let me rewind a little bit. The thing that I've changed is just this number. Yeah, that's it. Right? Now what that means is, now these guys no longer share anything in common. Right? One of the main reasons we expand, like why do we teach you this, is because you can collect like terms where you have no other options. But here you do have another option, because they are in common, unlike that question over there. Just, just leave them, leave them, because then you can factorise them out. There's a common factor, leave it there. Right? If what you're headed towards is something factorised, then if the currently factorised form is good, leave it. Whereas if the currently factorized form is no good, like what am I going to pull out of that? I suppose I could pull out the x, but then this guy's still a problem, right? Then you have no choice but to expand. So what am I going to do over here? I'm going to get everything on one side. So if you're following along with your working, let's subtract. 
Now I agree, it looks like a mess, but I could still work with it. What's the common factor I'm going to pull out? Look carefully. The x minus 2 is an obvious thing because it's standing there and it's really big. But there's other stuff too, isn't there? Yeah, I can in fact pull out a 2x from here and a 2x from here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now careful, think, big brackets. Once I pull 2x, x minus 2 out of this, what does it leave with? It's just 3. It's just 3. That's all I've got, right? What about out of here? Minus. Carefully. So the 2 is gone, one of the x's is gone, which leaves me with an x, and then I put an x minus 2, so what's left in here? At this point, that was a lot of mental effort to get there, but this question now I think we've trimmed down to size, right? Uh, let's just finish this out, so I'll lift the x minus 2 there. Uh, what's in here? 3 minus x squared plus 2x. Yeah, just watch out for those signs. Yeah, are you happy with that? Hmm. I can factorise this further, can't I? Can factor Maybe I'll make it a little easier for you by pulling out a negative. This is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3. What would you do with that? How, how will I factorise this? x minus 3, x plus 1. I better bring all of this stuff back. Are you happy with that so far? One last thing I'm going to do, uh, I pulled out a negative. Where did this negative come from? Why did I do that? It was because I didn't look, like the look of this, right? I didn't like the fact that uh, I wanted to make this monic, basically, and the, the coefficient here is negative one at the moment, so I pulled it out. But I didn't like it there, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative one. What happens to the right-hand side when I multiply it by negative one? The right-hand side. The right-hand side. When I multiply the right hand side by negative 1, nothing happens to that. But, because it was negative, right? It's an inequality, so what's happened to the inequality? Directions changed. Okay. We're almost there. Now have a look at this thing. What, what is this thing even? Okay. Um, we recognised before, we recognised it as a problem. This is not a quadratic, it's a... It's, it's a quartic, the power is 4, not that you need to know that name. But what this basically means is, you know a parabola, it goes up and down like this, right? Or up and down like this. If you had a cubic, what's the basic shape of a cubic? It just, yeah, it's going to go down and then it's going to wave up again. Or, or in a reverse direction, okay? So this is what happens when you have power 2, it turns around once. It's what happens when you have power 3, it turns around twice. What do you think happens when you have a power of 4? It turns around one more time, like this. Uh, like that. There's the one, two, three points. Or alternatively, it does it upside down just like these guys do. One, two, three. Think with me. <coughs> Happy version, sad version. Which do you think this is? Happy. Now, I would conclude it's a happy version. How do I know that? This is sort of getting into something that we're going to learn in a little more rigor a little later on. But I want you to think about what happens as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? If x takes on a very large positive value, you're either going really high or you're going really low. Really positive or really negative. Have a look at this thing. Right? As x gets really large, what happens to all of these numbers? Like if x was say a million, right? this is going to be 2 million. Right? Uh, what's this going to be? 999,000, no, I shouldn't have to the number this big, okay? You get the idea? Uh, this will be 999,997, sorry. This will be a million and one. Do you agree? What's the sign of all four of these numbers? When x is a million, the sign of all four numbers is positive, right? So you multiply four positive numbers together, what are you going to get? Another positive, okay? So this is the situation here. Lastly, what's going on? These numbers here, if I hid half of the question, right, like that, you could answer that in a flash, right? What would your answer be if that was the question? I want this thing to be less than zero. Do you agree? So it would be between negative one and three. Do you agree? That's because this is the shape in your head. Negative one and three. Do you agree? That's, that's the happy part there. 
Why a negative one and three the points that you read off that? Why do you just magically turn these backwards? Look at, look at the picture I've drawn. What's significant about negative one and three if that was all you had? What, what are the significance of these points? They're the intercepts, aren't they? They're the roots, <coughs> see? That's where they intercept. Okay? So have a look at this guy. This is the happy one we drew before. It's going to look like that. Count how many times I intersect. Once, twice, three times, four times. What would you guess those values are? Look, look, look. This one would give me zero. This one would give me two. This one would give me... This one would give me... So I have written them not quite in the right order. Negative one, zero, two, three. Don't worry about the scale. The question is not graph. The question is solved. Okay? Don't move. Look, look, one last time. I want to know when that thing is less than zero. When that is less than zero. You tell me where is it less than zero. Between here and here, that part's less than zero. I'll write, I'll write that down. And between two and three. Done. You happy? Does that make sense? Pretty hard.